and malnutrition. Climate change. Unsafe food. Deforestation. Poverty. Soil erosion. Inequality. Human rights violations and abuses. Food systems adds to these problems. We are the future. The young generations. But our future is uncertain. Food. Environment. People. We are all connected. Our beautiful planet should nourish us. Food shouldn't kill us. Food doesn't have to cost the earth. Food can be a way to create. Not to destroy. To learn and to honor and to protect. Our past and our future. To build mutual respect. Fairness. Understand. Collaboration. We must act for food and act for change so we can have good food for all we can pledge we can act we can change our world join the movement for better food systems hello everybody what you saw right there were future leaders of tomorrow leading today. It's nice to see you whether you're on Zoom or YouTube or Facebook or Twitter, however you're coming to this launch of Act for Food, Act for Change. It is so great to see you. I know you have questions, all right? Let me anticipate some of the questions. What is Act for Food? It is a global youth movement getting together saying, yes, we can have better sustainable food systems and we are going to make sure that happens. Also, how does everybody Absolutely everybody around the world get to benefit for good nutrition for all. That is what Act for Change is. Well, that's what Act for Food is. Act for Change, well, that is a to-do list. Can you imagine telling governments and businesses and UN agencies, other youth allies, people around the world, this is our to-do list. This is how we're going to get sustainable food systems in the future. This is what you need to do now and quickly. Well, that is what Act for Change is. It is a big to-do list. Other question. <laughs> you have so many questions. I like curious people. Who am I? Well, I'm Femi OK. I'm your moderator for the next 90 minutes. It's a great pleasure to tell you what is coming up. You will meet youth leaders who are so invested in food systems and sustainable food systems. You will hear their passion and also their concrete actions. What are they doing about it? I can see you already in the chat saying hello to each other. That is fantastic. We're all around the world, greet each other. But also, whenever you have a question at any point, put your question into the Q&A section. Put your question right there where it says Q&A, because a little bit later on, you will get to speak to all of the youth leaders, ask them questions, bounce off of them. What we want to do today is bring you into this global youth movement. If you're on the outside, you can be on the inside. If you're not too sure how to be an activist, oh, we have some ideas. We have some things for you to do. Because this is a global youth movement, you will meet youth leaders from around the world. If you have a look, if you're on the Zoom platform, at the bottom of the dashboard, you'll see a little globe there. We are bringing you this conversation in nine languages. This one, I can't help you with. This is South London. The others, like right there at the bottom of your dashboard in that little globe, click on that, you will find one of nine languages and then you can listen to all of the conversation in various different languages. Why nine languages? Well, because we have youth leaders from around the world. So you want to represent all of those languages, all of those regions, those countries that they come from. Hashtags because there's more than one way to have a conversation. Hashtag act for food, hashtag act for change. Use those in your conversations on social. And now let's meet the youth leaders. I'm gonna say hello to them and they will introduce themselves to you. Hello, Dipti, nice to see you. Tell everybody who you are, what you do. And Dipti will unmute um, herself speak to the world. Hello, I'm Dipti. I'm a youth leader of UN System Summit Action Track 1, Act for Food, Act for Change. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. More from Dipti in a moment. Hello, Rayan. Good to see you. Hey, everyone. Hi, my name is Rayan Qasem. I'm tuning in from Beirut, Lebanon. 
and I'm the regional youth focal point for the Middle East and North Africa in support to the United Nations Food Systems Summit. And I'm also a member of the core group of the Pledge. So nice to see you. More from Rayon in a moment. Hello to you, Priya. Welcome. Hello, my name is Priya Prakash and I'm the founder and CEO of Health Set Go and I'm a youth champion for the Act for Food, Act for Change and a member of the core team from India. Coming in live and direct from Ireland, we have Sophie. Hi, Sophie. Hi, everybody. My name's Sophie. I'm a lead group member of the Scaling Up Nutrition Movement, the co-chair of the Youth Liaison Group to the United Nations Food System Summit and a very excited member of the core team for the Youth Act for Change, Act for Food. I feel it. I feel the excitement jumping off the screen. And this is the point where I will test if you actually looked out for the little translation uh, device that right there at the bottom of your Zoom screen or in chat, because there'll be information in chat about how to use your interpretation if you do not speak English. For instance, if you speak French, bonjour Yazine, welcome. Yassine, go ahead and introduce yourself. Bonjour, moi c'est Yassine Yad. Hello everyone, I'm Yassine Yad. I'm, I'm here for Act for Food, Act for Change. So I am from Senegal. I'm a member of FAM and I'm also an editor of a women's magazine in Senegal. Thank you. More from Yazine later in our program. Hello to you, Lana from Brazil. Hello, my name is Lana and I am from Brazil. I am a youth climate activist and also a Real Food Systems Youth Ambassador and the Youth Vice Chair of uh, Shifting to Sustainable Consumption Patterns for the UN Food Systems Summit. Also very excited to be here. Do you see what we're doing here? We are jumping around the world. This is a global youth movement. Mildred, where are you coming in from? Welcome, introduce yourself. Hello, Mildred. Hello, Mildred. We will, have, we will stand by for Mildred while we're waiting for Mildred. Let us go to China, who are you? It is so nice to see you. Introduce yourself. Tell our audience who you are, what you do. Hi, I'm Hui Yu, the youth chair of the China Action Hub for Action Track 2 of the summit, launched by the Good Food Fund. I'm also a proud member of the Youth Pledge. Good to have you. And finally, we go to the Philippines for a youth leader in the Philippines. Hello to you, Milka. Hi, my name is Milka Jane Kamisuria from the Philippines and a youth representative of the World Association of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts and GPN in the Philippines. So nice to have you in the Philippines. I am going to see if I can connect with Zambia. It is a long way away from where I am sitting right here in my little Zoom room with you, but let us see if we can do it. Mildred in Zambia. Hello, you have a big build up. Mildred, are you there? I'm so sorry, but I think we lost. Uh, Mildred has right, dropped out from the back. call. We will come back. Hopefully we'll have Mildred in just a moment. All right, youth leaders, it is fantastic to see you. We're going to be in conversation all together. But I want to hold on, first of all, to Dipti and Rayan and Priya. Um, and, and to have a, a conversation really about the theme of what we're all doing here, why this launch is so important and where the idea came from. It's hard to believe that Dipti's head isn't this big on the entire screen, but she's a humble person. Because Dipti, how does this story start? Where's the origin story? How did it get started? Thank you, Femi. I'm always glad to hear to you. We had experience in Bangladesh between 2019 and 2020. Under the leadership of FEMI, there was a pledge that happened here. Uh, it was only for the adolescent, adolescent people, and we wanted to uh, eat good food and uh, live good. Uh, we successfully did it through the leadership of the adolescent people. The adolescent people, they, uh, they led it. We are working uh, 
with the young people and we wanted to bring some leadership from them. Say, one leader said, I will get pledged from 100 people and another from somewhere else, they said, I will bring 500 pledge. And this way, the number increased within one year, it became 1 million. And it is a historical event. And uh, we realized working with them that we have a lot of things that we um, we don't uh, have the opportunity. Uh, for example, uh, we realized that we cannot get a lot of good food from our pocket money. Why? And to find the answer, we have to reach the policymakers. Uh, but the young people are not always heard. And secondly, the influence for this work uh, is the business giants. They have realized uh, that young people wants to eat good food. Uh, one blame is always um, given to them that young people wants to eat junk food. That's why young junk food is produced. When we want, we will ask for good food. Good food will be produced. When I realized that uh, everything is not in our control, uh, when we will ask for good food, uh, then we have to ask whether we have the options. When I started working with Action Track, I in, I got introduced with uh, young leaders throughout all over the world. And when we had the opportunity to exchange our views, we realized that a successful pledge that can be done in Bangladesh, that can be done all over the world. And in this Food System Summit, uh, young leaders are um, uh, given a lot of um, uh, importance so we can try uh, to involve the young people to change this food system and we are the future leaders and we have to uh, think about our policies and food system right now and we have to gradually slowly uh, we have uh, given this global pledge and we are here to um, make an make a historical launch thank you Femi I'm feeling the history right now. Rayan, when I started and opened our session, one of the things I said was that we are going to give this global youth movement around the world, we're gonna launch it and also give people a chance to be activists as well. They don't just get to sit and watch this and hear about how you came up with this global movement. We want them to do something more. Can you talk us through the pledge? What is it? Um, we're, we're all going to pledge together. Just quick note to the interpreters. I'm going to be speaking the following in Arabic. Uh, so I would like to welcome you all. We have uh, a campaign entitled Act for uh, Food and Act for Youth. And it is a youth-led movement. Uh, it is a pledge uh, that we are committing uh, to. So the uh, young people have gathered around this pledge in order to invite young people uh, to around the same table uh, under the same banner uh, uh, and uh, to use this uh, uh, to exert the pressure on businesses, governments to take urgent actions uh, uh, means to pledge, to pledge uh, or, or the pledge uh, text has been drafted by ourselves, uh, the young people, the young people in front of you now, and we are going to unite our efforts uh, and uh, joining voices together, uh, and uh, we are going to uh, voice uh, our pledge and concern to the uh, food summit, uh, and uh, we will be under the same banner and working together, acting together to exert an enormous or a significant pressure on the uh, leaders and decision makers and politicians uh, and our voices will be uh, better heard. The uh, pledge has been drafted
crafted in such a way to speak about the uh, biological, the health uh, uh, crisis uh, and uh, link this uh, with the human rights. Uh, and we have included in the pledge that you can see on the website uh, that uh, we are young people excluded from uh, decision-making circles and we claim to be taken, uh, taking part in decision-making and be consulted by the decision-makers and leaders. What you can see now on the website, uh, here on the uh, uh, right left uh, left uh, hand on the yellow uh, you will see some other uh, similar young people who have made the pledge uh, and you can do it yourselves uh, you can uh, insert your name country and uh, i pledge which is uh, the uh, blue button uh, you press on it and then we will join voices together and we will try to uh, achieve as many pledges as possible. Thank you very much. Ryan, thank you very much. I was leaning in as you were doing your presentation. I could see a picture of you <laughs> sliding through that presentation. Appreciate that. So, Dick T explained the idea for At for Food. And I also want to bring in Priya, who's going to actually show us and tell us what the Act for Change part is. I said, Priya, it was a to-do list for people in power, like governments and businesses and UN agencies. How do you want to describe it and what are you going to show us? Yes, thanks uh, so much, Femi. So as the youth, as we all know, we are doers. We want to take action. And I think 2020 has kick-started an entire decade, which is all about actions. And it's all about the youth taking these actions to achieve the sustainable development goals by 2030. And it's not only that, I think that is what actions for change are all about. They are all for us as youth, as governments, as businesses to step up and take actions and pledge to improve the food systems over the next 10 years. And you'll be happy to know that hundreds of youth across the world sent in what their actions for change are. And we got 90 plus, almost 90 plus submissions. And from that, we have shortlisted it to 17 uh, actions for change. And now it's actually up to us to make sure that we go to these actions for change and we vote for our top five. In fact, let me actually show you that. As you can see in front of all of you, there is a website called www.actionsforchange.org. Now, when you go on the website, all you have to do is click on vote now. And when you click on vote now, you're going to see this screen. So as you can see on the left hand side, we have all the actions for change, which are the 17 actions for change. And once you have picked your top five on the right, you simply have to enter your information and click on vote now. So for example, I'll show you what my top five actions for change are. In fact, I have them listed down with me. So number one, every child should eat a healthy and sustainable meal at school, college or nursery. Number two, use advertising to promote healthy food and restrict junk food advertising. Number three, educate everyone about food and its impact on our planet and our health. Number four, everyone should be able to afford healthy and nutritious food. And number five, to ensure that young people have a seat at the table at every level of decision making. Now, I chose these five because I am passionate about health, nutrition and education for children, but a lot of these actions, no matter what your area of interest is in the food systems, you can find within these 17 actions for change. So for instance, there are actions such as to ensure that young people from all backgrounds benefit from food systems change. We promote plant-based diets. We value local and indigenous food knowledge. We introduce environmental labeling. And the last one is to create employment for young farmers and agripreneurs. So as you can see, I've given you some examples of what these actions for change are. So no matter what you believe in, what causes you support, you will find them all in these actions for change. So I know that I have decided my five and I'm going to be dropping my vote today. But all of us as the youth, we have time for the next few months to pick our top five actions and we can actually vote on this website. And once we vote for these actions, the priority actions will be presented to decision makers at the UN Food Systems Summit. 
So that is going to be a big moment. And I just want to tell all the youth that this is our chance to have our voice heard at the highest level. We get an opportunity to hold governments and businesses accountable, and we get the chance to create the food systems that we all deserve. So I can't wait for all of you to cast your vote, and I can't wait to see what all actions all of you have planned. Thank you so much. I am seeing people greeting each other from around the world, from Venezuela, from Nigeria. I see you, we see you. Also, if you're in the chat on our Zoom platform, you will see the link for the pledge. So not only are we explaining it, we're sharing it to you. And all you have to do is click, you're already on live. So you don't even have to go that far. I'm gonna ask for a one answer, one word answer from Rayan, from Freya and from Dipti. So unmute yourself, be ready. If you could describe what it is like to be here on launch day, Dipti, what would be that one word? It's amazing and very excited. I can't express in words. I'm very, very much excited. I know uh, the inspirations that are among the young people. Fantastic, very excited. That is more than one word, but I will allow you that. Priya, one word. Sum up what it's like to get at this moment, right now. I feel it is humbling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Rayan. I would say politics for me. Ah, very good. Dipti, Rayan, Priya, thank you so much for kicking us off. You will be coming back for the Q&A. I see that there are questions already. Like, how can I be part of this movement? I'm in Venezuela. All of those questions, Dipti, Priya, Rayan, and all of our youth leaders, they will be standing by to answer them a little bit later. We've got time in our program to do that. We are here for you. I want to tell you about the UN Food Systems Summit. It is coming up later in the year. What is unusual about it is the UN is having a food system summit and they are saying this summit is for people, everybody, citizens of the world. What do you want your food systems to look like? How can we make our food systems better? Bring up a, a seat, come to the table. We're inviting you to take part in that conversation. In this next chat with our youth leaders, I want to make that connection and they are gonna make that connection between what we are doing today with Act for Food and Act for Change and what is happening with the UN Food System Summit later on in the year. So I'm gonna say hello to Sophie, to Lana and Huiyu. It is really good to see you. Sophie, you have a role coming up in the UN Food System, System Summit. Can you explain what that role is, what that means? Yes, definitely. So the role I play in the UN Food System Summit is co-chair of the Youth Liaison Group to the UN Food System Summit. So what is the Youth Liaison Group? The Youth Liaison Group is the formal youth group in support of the UN Food System Summit and it compromises representatives from different youth groups, constituencies, organizations, movements, and just interested youth advocates from all across the globe. Currently, we have over 150 young people involved and these youth advocates help facilitate the work of youth engagement in the context of the United Nations Food System Summit, including projects, initiatives, work in different action tracks and events. We have working groups which include youth, children, education, school and outreach toolkits. We have the social media Food System Summit Community Digital Platform Working Group. We have a youth campaigns and mobilization and outreach working group. And we also have a youth led calendar working group. So we're really covering all bases in the, in the youth liaison group to the UN Food System Summit, so really ensuring that young people are part of every single process in the upcoming UN Food System Summit. And this pledge fits really well into it because the pledge really does act as the vehicle which supports all this engagement. And it also works to bring this youth engagement out of the summit and into the next 10 years, because as you know, we have less than 10 years to change the world. 
Mm. Lana, I want to bring you in here because uh, I, I'm sure that you're going to meet up with uh, Sophie at the UN Food System Summit, either literally or virtually, one way or another, you two are going to be connected. You also have a role in the UN Food System Summit. Would you explain what that is so we understand it and then connect it back to your home country of Brazil? What is the importance to some of the challenges that Brazil has in terms of sustainable food systems? Lana. Definitely. So I am one of the five youth vice chairs for the summit, and I am the youth vice chair of the action track or the focus area on shifting to sustainable consumption patterns. So by that, we are looking at current diets and how we can eat in ways that are better for the planet um, and in that way, allow people to have, you know, better diets that also will allow for better health, not only in the present day, but in upcoming years and decades as we're looking to 2030 and beyond. And realizing also that um, the most unsustainable diets have to be shifted most from high income countries, um, from Western diets, and that most of that responsibility comes from that area and that we need to understand the regional context as well. And I think Brazil is a really great example of how this is an international issue and how this plays out around the world. Because in Brazil, we can see that demand from countries such as the US and Europe for really meat heavy diets is fueling the production practices that are being criticized that are happening in Brazil with burning of the Amazon rainforest for cattle ranching. That is in order to have the sufficient meat production to export that to the Europe and to Europe. And then that ends up impacting Brazilian populations, especially indigenous peoples in Brazil are most directly impacted um, by these food production practices. And also this food could be going to Brazilians, right? It could be going to us. Um, and especially the large amounts of crops that are grown to then feed to animals, to then turn into meat for the US and Europe, that could very easily go to being very healthy, nutritious food for Brazilians ourselves. Uh, but this plays out on an international scale. When you have health, unhealthy, unsustainable diets in one place, that impacts food production across the world. So that's why the shift to healthy, sustainable consumption is so important. And I'm really proud to be working on that in Action Track 2 with the summit as well. Well, you, I see you nodding as Lana was speaking and Lana is in Brazil, you are in China. What was resonating that you were nodding? I could see that you recognize exactly what she was saying, but you live in a completely different part of the world. Tell us more. Yes. So, you know, for China's people to benefit from the economic success, we must shift to healthy and sustainable consumption patterns. Now over 50% of China's adults are overweight or obese, largely due to unhealthy eating habits, and it causes high hidden cost to society. The shift is never easy task for, for such a high population country like China, which has just successfully eliminated hunger and is now embracing rural revitalization as a new development paradigm. We need an integrated food system approach to address the challenge from food security, from climate change, and also public health, as well as many other. For instance, we convened a dialogue on rural revitalization to explore how we can harness local food production for healthy diets. And we also convened a dialogue on wet markets, you know, which is policy priority for post-COVID recovery. We explore how wet markets can support smallholder farmers, livelihoods of vendors, and also access to nutritious and affordable food, and also not healthy eating. So my organization, the Good Food Fund, has launched the China Action Hub for Action Track 2 of the summit to promote the summit to Chinese population, and also encourage and facilitate more participation and contribution from China. We have convened and support dialogues to connect decision makers from governments and business and also various stakeholders, including youth. Through the dialogues, we celebrate youth action. We had featured student-led Meatless Monday campaigns. We had, we had discussed youth in agricultural development. They returned to rural homes 
and I want to I just want to highlight that all the amazing work at the Good Food, uh, at the China Action Hub is facilitated by youth and my cohorts at the Youth Working Group of China Action Hub is really creating momentum to make the summit a truly a people's summit. And now we are having uh, 20,000 Chinese audience on live stream with us together. Wow, <laughs> that is extraordinary. Yeah, I'm going to do a little bit of this. <laughs> Everybody's applauding in their seats. Um, hello, China. Really nice to see you. Hello, cohorts of Hui Yu. Uh, one of the things that I, I thought was really important is that you're all going to come back, Sophie, Lana, Hui Yu, uh, to answer the Q&A questions. And I, I'm going to say, audience, uh, lovely to see you from all over the world. I know you're chatting down the side. But put those questions, put those questions in the Q&A box because I can't be scrolling up and down. There's hundreds of you and your questions are great <laughs> and you're going to make me scroll forever. So make it easy. Put your questions in the question box. So because this is live and because Sophie, Hui Yu and Lana are fabulous, bring them all back. I want to ask you when we get to the Q&A and unmute yourself so you're ready for this. What is going to be your expertise? Sophie, tell us what your expertise is. You are going to take questions on what, Sophie? Um, to ensure that a healthy diet isn't a luxury and that we do, in fact, have good food for all into the future. All right. All right. Give the hard questions to Sophie. Ask her hard questions. She's such a rebel. All right. Lana, you are going to take questions on what? What's your expertise? Um, I'm happy to take questions on the action tracks of the summit and more specifics on the UN Food Systems Summit coming up later this year. Very good. And I've seen questions about the UN Food Systems Summit, but again, they are in the chat and they're like a hundred questions back, chats back. So if you're asking about UN Food Systems, take that question, put it in the Q&A box and then Lana will answer them for you. Who are you with your 20,000 cohorts <laughs> streaming? <laughs> what do you want to ask questions about? Answer questions about what's your expertise? Uh, I work on food policy initiatives and also youth engagement in policy making. All right, Sophie, Lana, Hui Yu, some of the young leaders standing by waiting for your questions. I'll see you in a moment. I'm going to move on to do one more thing before we have this big Q&A session, which is all of us. So it's very interactive. What I want to do is you've heard people speaking. So Sophie and Lana and Hui Yu, thank you very much. I'm going to send you back to the virtual green room for now, talking about why they are so passionate about changing food systems, why it's so important, why sustainable food systems are important. Also, these perspectives from different parts of the world as well. But rather than just the leadership, let's talk about some concrete change that has happened. Right. So I want to bring in Yasin and I also want to bring in Milka to talk about the work that they are doing down on the ground. Yasin, I'm going to start with you. Uh, based in Senegal, what are you doing to change food systems for your community, your communities in Senegal? Can you tell us more, please? Yes, Femi, we work with uh, groups that are involved in agriculture, whether or not this be the production or the transformation and selling of our agricultural products. We know that it's very important to really emphasize the role of uh, people involved in agriculture in food systems, when it comes to feeding our countries and our populations, we try therefore to involve young people and particularly women involved in agriculture and, and really underline the importance of, of what we are producing and the fact that we need to produce what we actually consume. So we need to understand that when we look at the products we are producing, they need to be really geared towards African populations, natural foods that we consume traditionally. And we need to therefore have a real link with producers and make sure that we, uh, we raise awareness of that. This is what we're trying to do at the moment to support them also with selling their products and selling them online also. We work with supermarkets also to, to make sure that these li links can be really established. Thank you. 
Thank you, Yasin. Milka is uh, coming to us from the Philippines. And Milka, this whole global movement is a global youth movement. So of course, people are going to be young, but you get the prize for the youngest out of all of our team who are online right now, which is fantastic. What I want to know, and, and this, is, this has always been a challenge, is how do you get that seat at the table, the app for food and app for change? The app for change bit is asking for urgent, bold action from people who are policy makers. As somebody who is a young person, where's your power? How are you using that power? Do you have power? Um, here in the Philippines, we recently we just launched the GPN 2.0 program, Girl Power Nutrition, where we girls um, ranges from 16 to 20. We raised campaign about the rising cases of malnutrition here in the Philippines. Since malnutrition is since the rising cases of malnutrition is very Tell me, tell me about the rising case in malnutrition. Why? Because yeah. of the economic. Um... So, when you when you're thinking about what you need to do as a young person, how did you find your voice, Milka? Is Milka still with us? Have we lost her? We we'll come back to Milka. Hello, Mildred. I see you, Mildred from Zambia. Mildred, can you put your video back on? All right, fantastic. This is a, a little study in perseverance. If you're a youth leader and you need to get your voice heard, you don't give up at the first hurdle. We are seeing that in action. We are seeing the hurdles and we are not giving up. Mildred, will you tell everybody who you are and what you do? Welcome. I'm Mildred Munjunga from Zambia and I'm the representative for International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent. Mm -hmm. um, my work revolves around disasters. So where there are disasters, that's where I am. Uh -huh. We respond to disasters and how I am involved in the food security system is that usually when we are conducting um, responses or pre preparedness to respond to disasters we do include the aspect of food and we have three pillars that that we, that we work on that is the standard for the ifrc mm -hmm. we have the cash uh, transfer modality which is either cash transfer or it's either uh, in kind where we do distributions uh, food distributions when a disaster is strike we also have uh, entrepreneurship among the three pillars mm -hmm. where we link farmers to, to farmers union, to governments, to different stakeholders, um, as well as to markets. And the third pillar that we have uh, is where we support farmers. Uh, we, we, we bring on board government and other stakeholders that we work with to support small, small scale farmers so that indeed there is food security in the nation. Mm. Wow. That is amazing. where our work revolves around. Thank you, Mildred. Mildred is in Zambia. I really appreciate the fact that we made that connection because that's such important work. We really wanted to hear about that. Milka, I just want to go back to you for a moment because your perspective is really important. How do you, which is what we're doing all here, how do you persuade other young people like yourself to become change makers? What advice would you give them? Um, since the youth is the backbone of the society, we, um, we must convince other, other people that we can be a part of a change. By pledging this, by, ple by through pledging in the website, we can make a change. For one of the causes of malnutrition is our broken food systems. If we do not fix or change our food systems, many people will also be affected by it and it will also affect the economic, social, and environmental status of a country or nation that has malnutrition. Mm, thank you so much. So we have Yasin from Senegal, we have Milka from Philippines, and we have Mildred from Zambia. So glad the connection's held up. I am gonna ask you all to stand by 
for our Q&A session. But for now, ladies, thank you. So what you've been hearing is a global youth movement that is starting from the grassroots level goes up. Act for Food is a global youth movement. Act for Change is asking policymakers, people in power, this, not asking, actually telling, <laughs> people in power what they need to do to create sustainable food systems. But what is always nice is to have allies, always nice to have politicians at a high level saying, yes, we get it, yes, we support you. I want to bring in the foreign minister for Ireland. His name is Simon Coveney. Over to you, minister. Hello, everyone. I'm delighted to affirm Ireland's support for the Act for Food, Act for Change campaign. This Global Youth Pledge campaign is entirely youth-led and truly global in nature. It's a powerful example of youth voices from across the world coming together to achieve change in what is a critical year for food systems. Those voices include Sophie Healy Tho, who joins peers from Malawi, Brazil, Fiji, Bangladesh, Kenya, and so many more countries. Together you are igniting discussion and sparking action. The Global Youth Pledge is simple, yet highly effective. It gets to the heart of what food systems transformation is all about, ensuring that every person on this planet has access to safe, affordable, and nutritious food that is produced sustainably. I wanna pay tribute to those of you who have worked tirelessly to get this campaign off the ground and who will inspire thousands more to engage with food systems transformation in the weeks and months ahead. Over half of the world's population is under the age of 30. So you are absolutely central to our collective efforts to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. This year's landmark UN Food Systems Summit is focused on people and solutions. So it needs your voices, your ideas, and your passion for positive change. The Act for Food, Act for Change campaign is a dynamic vehicle for this collective energy. And Ireland is a proud supporter of your efforts. Thank you very much and good luck. Thank you very much, Minister. And of course, if there are other ministers watching, do not be the last to come on board to Act for Food and Act for Change. I promised you a Q&A session. This is gonna be a great one. So we're gonna bring back all of our youth leaders so that we can pose some of these questions to them. This is Samuel. Samuel wants to know about the COVID-19 pandemic. Samuel says that the COVID-19 pandemic has worsened the food system with disruptions affecting transport costs and hence the prices of food. Going by the city or region as the focal point of development, does the UN food system take urban and peri-urban agriculture as a potential entry point to sustainable cities with resilient food systems? That is quite a, a, a deep, deep question. Rayan, can you handle that one? Do, you, do I need to repeat any of that at all? It's about the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on food systems. It would be great to give me 20 more seconds just to read it by myself. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have 20 more seconds, Rayan, because we are live. <laughs> but that question comes from Samuel. Um, and he's talking about the COVID-19 pandemic, worsen the food system, disruptions affecting transport costs and the prices of food. So can you talk to us about that point? All right. Um, you, okay, taking urban, penny urban agriculture as a potential entry point to sustainable cities. It can be. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not so sure about which area exactly you're referring to, but I do yeah, know that. But, I, mm. Yes, please, Femi, go ahead. Yeah, you, you can talk about the areas that you know about because we're, we're geographical, so we can share that question yeah. around many of our young leaders. You don't have to do the whole globe, uh, but tell us right. the areas that you, you, you're you confident about. Awesome. Um, so I could tell you here in West Asia or the Middle East or the Near East, as you might know it, um, Dubai and Saudi Arabia are taking great initiatives regarding what, what was mentioned in the question. 
um, in collaboration with the regional, what do you call it, the regional collaboration center that is under the United Nations um, food, um, not the food, uh, the climate change convention. So yeah. they're taking big ops on that. And I had a talk with the minister in Dubai, the Sheikha, and she mentioned that um, there are great changes being um, worked on up until 2030. But if you'd like more or detailed info, you can just text me and I'll let you know about that. All right. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll work out a way to communicate. I'm not sure you should be giving out your telephone number, but I love the fact that you're very accessible. Um, what is, oh, I, I'm going to give this question to Sophie. This is from Rick. Hi, Rick. Thanks for being with us today. What do you think is the first step in communicating with people in power? Sophie has this great story about her walking into a big high level meeting, opening the door, sitting down. Telling them what's what. I think I may be slightly exaggerating, Sophie. Do you want to retell that story and then talk about communicating with people in power? Sure, yeah. So that's a really great question, Rick. For a really, really long time, I was, I thought of myself as that token youth box that was ticked off in many big conferences and events, and it was really disempowering and it was really disheartening, but also it was quite motivating for me. It made me realize that young people aren't being taken seriously and that we need to be, and that we actually do need to fight to have our positions in rooms and at decision-making tables, not only to be heard, but also to be taken seriously and be part of decision-making processes. So you need to be loud. You, you need to get out there. You need to get on social media and you need to start kind of like, lobbying get to your um your government and people in positions of power and let them know what you're passionate about and what you want to see change because that's the only way that they will know and and take notice of you but also get involved in youth-led initiatives and youth-led organizations because they're really the people on the ground and they're the people who are going to be around you for the next 10 years as we reach the end of the sustainable development goals. So you need to work within your power, but also work to get at those decision-making tables. And I really, really um, encourage you to be part of this pledge where we will have those connections to decision makers and we will make sure we have those connections to decision makers and also be part of the youth engagement process as part of the UN Food Systems Summit because we have many co-chairs of VI action tracks um, as part of this pledge and they're really there sitting at those decision making tables so you can be part of them as well and really you can be there so I really encourage you to do get involved. Libti, can I ask you that same question? Because I think it's a really good question because you came up with an idea that it is now a global movement. So you must know how to take your idea and take it up that pipeline so that it gets to people who have power. How do you do that? Dipti, unmute yourself. Go ahead. Femi, thank you. I think this is a huge platform. We say uh, we have to listen to the young people, but then the question comes, how we will listen to our young people? From where we will listen to them? Uh, we can't reach all of them individually. And this is a platform where we can bring uh, in this in in one place uh, the all the youth voices all of, from all over the world and send it to the policymakers. That's why Act for Food, Act for Change is so important. It's not only a uh, pledge signing for good food. Uh, it's not like that. Its influence is far wider, and. And most probably, uh, this is the first ever engagement of uh, the youth, uh, young people from all over the world uh, to take a pledge and send it to the policymakers. And this is a, a revolutionary change, I think. 
There's a question here, Priya, and I, I'm going to put this one to you. Uh, and mm -hmm. I, I, anyone who's following the news will, will understand why. So unmute yourself so that you are ready for this question. This is from Blanche. Hi, Blanche. Thank you. What can you say about this pandemic that everyone feels hunger? So connecting COVID-19 pandemic with hunger, I'm going to remind people that Priya uh, is from India. So India right now is in the, in the grips of a second wave. Um, the first wave had a very serious lockdown. And people, the, there was a crisis. Are people going to go hungry? Are people not going to catch COVID? And some people were just, I, I'm going to catch COVID because I have to, I have to work. I have to go out. I have to eat. That's the context with which um, I want you to listen to Priya. Priya, go ahead. Sure. Um, thanks for bringing up that question because India, as you mentioned, is in the grips of the second wave. And, um, you know, there was a time where we thought that things were coming back to normal and the supply chains were absolutely fine. And now again, we have been thrust back into that position. And of course, you know, being here um, is a big privilege for me to be on this platform, but it's it's not easy for so many people who are out there, who, who are without internet, who are without access to resources. And I think the biggest thing that is, is missing is the supply chain around food right now. So of course, hunger is a huge problem in India, but, I'd, uh, but you know, just putting it in the context of the youth, I think what I have seen is that you know, uh, I have to say it out here that more than the government, the youth has been the one stepping up during the second wave. I have seen everybody on social media and how people have just connected with each other, how people have got supplies from one place to another just using social media. It has been fantastic to see this all being driven by the youth, you know, by people under 30. You know, we we all sit and think, okay, well, let's wait for the government, let's wait for the businesses to step in and do something. But the second wave in India has really shown the power of the youth. There have been so many volunteer efforts that I'm myself a part of where there have been supplies that have been distributed to people. I think everybody in the youth has a united goal that we do not want to let a pandemic make people go hungry, children go hungry. And although school meals have been disrupted, uh, people don't have migrant labor populations have been affected, but the youth, the public, we are the ones actually having the most impact in India. And uh, I think it's definitely a case study to learn from, um, you know, because the pandemic isn't going anywhere. And I do feel like our role as the youth um, plays a huge, um, a huge uh, level of importance here. Thank you, Priya. I, I want to bring in Hui Yu here. Hui Yu, uh, unmute yourself so you're ready. Um, one of the attendees to our event would like to share their ideas and what they have done. And on this platform, the app for change, app for food, and they're not sure what they need to do. Hui Yu, how did you get your ideas to this movement? Did the movement come to you? Did you come to the movement? How do, how do you do it? So I, I've seen young people uh, in my country, they are getting, becoming more and more aware of uh, food issues uh, like uh, reducing food waste or uh, eating plant forward. And I, I really find that the Food System Summit really offers an opportunity to, to gather these young people together for a common goal, which is to transform food systems. So uh, the act actions for change, I believe the, the set of goals, they offer a, an opportunity for young people to understand much better the systematic issue and they are uh, doing efforts for, for transforming the, the food system for not only the health of our own communities, but also the planet and also animals. I'm going to get all of you to answer this question because it's Teresa Borelli is being mischievous, playing the devil's advocate. So, um, Lana, I'm going to start with you, but I really want everybody's take on this one. So Teresa says, what would Act for Food, Act for Change say to corporate agri-food business that may not be interested in changing their food production models to take into account sustainable food system models. So big agro. 
what would you say to them if they're like, yeah, you know, we make enough money the way that we do it right now. Lana, you get to start. How would you start that conversation? Um, I would start, and I've done a few consumer campaigns. Um, I would start by saying that this is what young people want. That's just a hint of what everyone in the future is going to want because young people are the future. So if we are interested in more environmentally friendly, sustainable, equitable products, that is just your little <laughs> um, guess of what is going to be what everyone is wanting in the future. So you can get ahead of those trends or you can wait until um, people shift away from what your business is doing and that will ultimately be worse for your business, for your earnings. So it actually is very beneficial for you to look at what the next generation is interested in. And for us, that means a lot of social justice, a lot of environmental concerns uh, for people, planet and animals. Um, let me ask that, that same question to Dimpty. If I sit in front of a big businessman, then I will ask him, uh, there are a lot of uh, profits. Um, if you think uh, uh, about our um, uh, interest rather than only for the financial interest, that will be really helpful. And the youth uh, uh, of these days are not um, uh, as naive as before. Uh, we don't only uh, go for the taste, we want uh, for the good food as well. And I think if you think um, uh, uh, at, uh, about the nutrition at the same time of uh, the good taste, uh, that will be helpful for everyone. And that's a good advice for me. <laughs> um, I see lots of people smiling here. I, I, I like that approach. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Yasin, let me, let me bring you in here. Um, how do you ensure the implementation of the Act for Change demands? There's a, there's a list, there's a to-do list. This, this is what we want you to do as businesses, as governments, as UN agencies. How do you make sure that they not only take you seriously, but take on those demands, Yassine. So first of all, we need to allow the young people to have access to the political world. This is very important. We are not only the future, but we are the present. So we uh, need to be heard we need to trust young people. And if we want to develop agriculture, you need to involve young people. You can't just discuss like agriculture. We have the strength to do so, to contribute. Indeed, adults may have experience, but we have the strength. And I think that together we can develop sustainable agriculture. So we need to be heard. Mm. I'm gonna move on. Um... Uh, and this one is, is very similar, Milka, to, to the last question, but I think people are wondering the how. Uh, we've explained really importantly in, in, in great detail why this is important, but the how is, is very challenging. Milka, can you unmute yourself so that you're ready? Um, uh, Milka is in the Philippines. How can we hold countries accountable, so this is countries here, not governments, and convince them to change their policies without directly targeting them and being overly aggressive? That is such a great question. That is a fantastic question. That is from somebody who understands that the politics are going to be quite tricky. Politics are change. Milka, how, how do you, wow, you're in the Philippines. How do you ask your officials in the Philippines to think differently about food? Um, just we must spread awareness of what what it causes and also what it poses the threats the positive outcomes the negative outcomes don't know which will apply best if what we will comply mm -hmm. and
All right, so uh, we have lost Milka's audio because her, her, her microphone has got muted again. We'll come back to you in just a moment. Um, this is a good one. I, I like this one because this one is a sort of 101 for why you all do what you do, youth advocates. And it's about connecting, improving the food system and the ecosystem with youth. What is that connection? Why do you care so much? Will you, do you want to pick up on that? And I'm actually going to go round table with everybody. Will you uh, unmute yourself? You start with this one. Food systems and young people. So, we know ma many sectors are involved in food systems and young people can act for change, not only as responsible consumers, as advocates, volunteers, but also like future scientists. So there are a lot, a lot of roles that young people can, can be at the front of the transformation of food systems. Mm. Let me put that one to Mildred, because I see Mildred, so when I see her, I'm gonna ask her a question. Mildred, that connection between young people and improving food systems and sustainable food systems, can you make that connection for the attendee who, who wanted to say, what, why is it important? Go ahead and unmute yourself. I do resonate with, with that because uh, youths are the, are, the, are the future. And if we're not thinking about the future, then we're not being sustainable. So even when we talk about uh, food security issues, we need to add that sustainability aspect in that. And when we add the sustainability as aspect, we're not only going to achieve one sustainable development goal, but we're going to achieve all the sustainable development goals because it's starting with food. If we have proper nutrition, if we have a, a stable food systems, then people will not be malnourished. People will be able to go to, to, to schools, meaning the income, the income of the household, is also, it, it also improves. So I think for the, for the young people, we need to be involved in this because if we're not involved, then we're not thinking about our future. So I do, I do resonate with that. Mm. Priya, go ahead, weigh in. Um, yes, so I think, um, you know, like Huyu was also saying that there can be a lot of vehicles that the youth can use. And I just want to bring in the entrepreneurial, com you know, the community of entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs today that are coming up with interesting and innovative models in healthy food and nutrition, coming up with things that are consumer products and are also giving that sort of fight to the, to the big businesses that are out there by providing those alternatives. And I think that the youth can actually vote with their wallets. You know, every time you go into a supermarket, you can make that decision of what you want to purchase as a young consumer. And I think that is what will really push the businesses if we as the youth can not only do that voting with our wallets and purchase healthy products, but also provide these healthy products by, you know, taking an entrepreneurial route. Um, so that's, uh, you know, one important point and one important vehicle of entrepreneurship. I'm seeing a lot of chats like this one but this one is turned into a question this is from Laurie Labopoulos and uh, thank you for this question uh, what you're doing youth advocates these actions are inspiring what could we do if we would like to become a young leader in our country what activities are we recommended to develop I'm going to do everybody everyone who's whose video is on <laughs> don't start turning your video off is going to answer that question so if you want to be like you Sophie where do you start I think the First really great way to start is to sign our pledge and to be part of our team and to take action and use our actions for change. But we're also part of a really complex system. Food systems, they're not easy. In a country like Ireland, which is quite wealthy, people don't realize that they're part of the food system that is a global food system. And that's why I think we're really excited to have 
join forces with Good Food for All, which is the UN Food System Summit campaign, which really does ensure that food system transformation is understandable and works with young people to create this change. So you can also become a food system hero and also join and be part of um, the youth community platform on the UN Food System Summit website. I see people are watching you and hearing about what you're doing and want to be you. How do they do that? Unmute yourself, you're seen, and join the conversation. We. Oui. So a lot of people are saying, this is very inspiring. How do I also become a youth leader for food systems and sustainable food systems? What advice would you give our audience? I think you need passion. That's very important. If you are passionate about what you do, that's how you can uh, succeed. It's not that easy, that's true. It's sometimes these uh, food systems are complex, but you need also maybe to meet other young people, exchange, discuss, communication is key, to also know how you can work together. And of course, join us. That's very important. Come and sign the pledge because we need to act and to do so you can't be on your own and we need to go for it now and we can succeed all together. I like this question It's one that comes up an awful lot which is what can the consumer do as a consumer what can you do to improve food systems? Rayan do you want to start with that? Um, sure well as a consumer, you need people to join um, or you need to lead on the solutions as a consumer. And so you need to demand what kind of food products do you want to eat? You need to demand what kind of human rights do you want within food systems? You need to demand to stop wars. You need to demand to increase or to, to improve food production. You need to demand to stop smuggling. You need to demand many things. But how can you do that? It's by signing our pledge, it's by joining the Food System Summit, it's by joining other initiatives that other people have taken. But you can do that by yourself. And that's why we have the actions for change. So you can vote on what you want. They might not encompass every single thing within food systems, but they do have a general scope about what, you know, generally consumers want within food systems. So that's what you can do, I think, in general. Mm. Any other thoughts about consumers? Because I am assuming that you are not just leading in food systems, but you're also practicing what you talk about, Milka, as a consumer. How are you showing the way? What can consumers do? As a consumer, consumers are the one who eats, who uses the food. And as a consumer, we must we must be careful in choosing our food choices. We must get on what we can only eat and not waste food because food is very crucial and many people around the world cannot avail some kinds of food. And we must also conserve food and mm -hmm. be practical about it. Mm -hmm. Can you give me a practical example? How do you eat what you preach? <laughs> Do you buy stuff in plastic packaging? Um, what? No. <laughs> what do you what do you do? Give us an example. See, I only get what I, what I can consume and not mm -hmm. some other people you see in buffets, like in buffets. They over what's the term? You know that over consuming their food yeah. and then and for anyone. And, so, and the and the yes. In our term, like kanugon, daw ka kanugon, blas ang pagkaon. Kung kanugon ang pagkaon, like, you're just wasting food for nothing. And mm -hmm. where does the food go? To the mm -hmm. trash bins. If it, it, will, it will be much better if we conserve it and we must take note that we must only get what we can consume. 
Thank you, Milka. Group questions. Everybody unmute themselves. I know that our technical director will be horrified. You know this emoji? <laughs> I just made everyone unmute themselves. Talk to each other about what was the question that you thought that you might get, but that you haven't, that you think is really important, that you have an answer and address. Sophie. Was there anything? Did we did we cover it? I love I love making Sophie's face do that. <laughs> did we cover everything, Sophie? Um, I think so. I mean, I think what's really interesting is everybody's personal stories of why exactly we're here and what makes us passionate, and maybe that's something that we could share because each of us actually come from a different sector that we're interested in, different topics, different countries, different cultures, religions, first languages, but what brought us together was food and our passion for food system transformation. And I think that's what has brought everybody together as attendees today. We all might be involved. I know Priya's uh, a medic, you know? So there's all these different areas that come together and have brought us together. And can I ask that to, the, to my teammate? You can, but we are going to be getting together many, many, many times and we're going to be heading into, you You keep reminding us, uh, uh, Sophie, about the pledge and I'm actually going to show and tell the pledge in, in just a moment. But I, I absolutely get that everyone comes from different backgrounds, but that would be great if you can just as wrapping up this Q&A session, just ask for your, your cohorts what they do so everyone can be amazed by uh, what they do. They're not just leaders and advocates in sustainable food systems, but also, Sophie, go ahead, ask everybody. Um, Priya, what do you do? Uh, thanks, Sophie. Um, well, I run a social enterprise here in India. It's called Health Set Go, and we are working with over 250,000 students in schools across India to educate them about health, nutrition, take care of their medical health and their healthcare needs. Um, and so I'm really excited to be here because I know that all the actions for change, the ones that that I want to contribute to, I'm going to take back to India and I'm going to take back to all these schools and universities and get all the students engaged. So I'm, I'm really happy to be able to do that. Should I keep going? Please. Yes. Hey, thank you. Uh, I, I came from the background of urban planning. And my passion is reforming wet markets to improve uh, the wet markets for livelihoods, for access, and affordable food. Uh, we, I don't want to see that the wet market is simply replaced by supermarkets. Oh, so that's such a good point. Uh, I'm going to speed things up a little bit. Milka is still at school, which is fantastic. Milka, when you finish school, what do you want to do next? Um, I'm, planning to, I'm planning to proceed nursing, uh, a course in nursing. All right, we're, we're seeing a future nurse in action. Divti, what do you do? I'm 17 years old. I want to get more expertise about the things that I feel more. I want to study more about it. Maybe I will become a social activist after I finish my study. I may become a nutritionist as well. You are already a social activist and you're kind of a nutritionist as well. I know you can tell me a lot of good stuff about that. Mildred, just very briefly, tell everybody what you do when you're not being a youth leader, although you're oh, being a yes. youth leader all of the time, Mildred. Go ahead. I don't. Okay, so um, I'm in, an environmental educator. I, I studied environmental education during my undergrad and I am more passionate about climate change. That's where I'm trying to focus on and research. I usually do a lot of research, so I interact with different communities. Fantastic. So I love I love research, yes. Fantastic. That's where I, I want to specialize. And when you when you when you're not being part of this global youth movement, what else do you do? I'm still a youth leader, actually, at my job, um, representing Arab youth. That is what I want to do. That is what I mainly do. And I'm hosting a podcast specifically for Arab youth on nature, climate, um, and food. So 
This is food, but I am also involved with the nature and climate as a youth leader. All right, Yassine knows what I'm going to ask her, which is Yassine, what do you do? Unmute yourself, Yassine. Alors, je suis uh, ag entrepreneur agricole. I am an entrepreneur. I work in the processing of uh, green products. I also opened a supermarket of uh, organic products. So I'm very involved in agriculture. I'm also training uh, people on villages when it comes to training women as well on spices, aromatics, so that all these uh, natural spices can uh, be used by women. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, youth leaders, youth advocates, thank you so much. We're coming back to you in just a moment, but we've been talking about a pledge. This is an interactive conversation. Attendees, thank you for, for taking part in the Q&A. Thank you for all of your comments, your greetings from around the world, telling us what you're doing as well to improve sustainable food systems and create sustainable food systems. You have heard us talk about the pledge and I'm going to show you what the pledge looks like. So we do a little show and tell. If you're on the Zoom platform, you will see the link for the pledge. But right now we're going to put that page up for you. And then I will literally, I'll talk you through what to do. It is so easy. And many of you are asking, well, how can I get involved? How can I be a leader? I'm going to screen share with you. So if you go to HTTPS forward slash forward slash and then go to actionsforfood.org. This is the part where we're going to share the screen. So stand by backstage, share the screen so that you can see what to do with the pledge. So HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash actionsforfood.org forward slash let's go down to where it says pledges all right and you put your name in Ooh, there you go you put your email in <laughs> hello name put your email in uh email select your country click on select your country very good wherever your country is and then you ask for updates, which I know you will want, so you can find out what happens to Act for Food and Act for Change over the next few months. And then you pledge. That is it. You could have pledged at the same time as I showed you. So there is one more thing that I want to do with all of you. We're going to take that screen share off. Thank you very much. Thanks for pledging. Are you actually going to pledge in real time? All right. Not unless you put your real name in there. Uh, youth advocates, youth leaders, I would love you to just take us out on. This is a rallying cry. We are launching the campaign, this global movement, but also giving people a chance to say, OK, I want to be part of this. And what is your call to action going to be? Milka, your call to action. Unmute yourself. Rally us. Milka, you are still muted. If you'd like to unmute yourself, then we'll be able to hear you. Go ahead. Uh, my call to action is that one of the reasons that malnutrition is running rampant in many nations and countries here in our world is because of our broken food systems. If we do not change our broken food systems or fix it, many people will also fall into the state and be affected of malnutrition and also affect the environmental social and economic factors of a nation or country with malnutrition. And also it can affect the future of the youth within that nation. Sophie, what's your call to action? Well, right now over 50% of the population across the globe is under the age of 30. And we have less than 10 years to change the way we consume look at, act, have access to and treat food. So Act for Food is our promise to galvanize action, to defeat hunger, improve health and heal the planet. And Act for Change is the ways in which we will do this, but we cannot do this alone. We are not yet in decision-making seats and we need big businesses and governments to act with us to ensure that a healthy diet is not a luxury, 
for young generations into the future. Thank you, Sophie. Hello, Priya. What do you want to leave us with? Yeah, so, um, you know, having worked with the youth over the last five years, um, you know, across schools in India, what I've realized is that change is not only possible top to bottom, but it can definitely be possible bottom up. And as a youth, we are not the future. As was said, we are the present and we can go and claim that seat on the decision making table. So if all of us decide, uh, as, as Mahatma Gandhi once said, if we be the change that we want to see in the world, and if we can just increase our circle of ownership to take ownership of the world we live in, the food systems that affect us, then I'm sure that we can create the world that we want around us. Ray, and what's your call to action? Arab youth, you've been underrepresented, you've been silenced, you're over 100 million in this world. Um, use this platform, use this pledge to try to call for action. I am here to help you to call for the action needed in our region, but I do need your help. You do need to sign and you do need to vote on what actions you need, and then I can do the job needed from there. Thank you. Thank you. Mildred, can you turn your video on? Can you turn your microphone on? What is your call to action, please? Yes, my call to action is that we should really invest in long-term food, long food programming, because where we are always doing short-term temporary response to, to, uh, to food insecurity, we're not doing much. It, it's, it's not making a difference because we are just making our community to be dependent on us and year in, year out, we'll have to respond to the same disasters, respond to the same food insecurity. But we need to now look at, in the long run, what, is, what are we investing in? We should come up with a long-term uh, food program that would that is sustainable and that will work for even future generations. That will be my call to action. Thank you. Yasin, please unmute yourself and leave us with your final rousing words. We must have the involvement of young people, young women in the agricultural systems and in the decision making process so that we can really become autonomous. We need to increase women's empowerment. We also need to include the aspect of producing high quantities, but high quality as well. You. Uh, people often think that eating healthy means you have less to choose from, but my call to action is that everyone should be enabled, inspired, and motivated to enjoy more varieties of good food. And finally, Dipti. I think people has uh, rights and responsibilities. We youth have responsibilities, we have our rights. So when we'll get conscious about our rights, then we can be uh, uh, doing our responsibilities well. We have to understand good food is our right and we have to choose good food. And when we will choose the good food, then we'll have a responsibility that we are in favor of good food. For a quite long time, the youth people, uh, our food system has been neglected. We did not think a lot about our food, but the food system is something that is involved in every aspect of our life. And if we say the youth people are not listened to, they are not involved in the policy making, um, uh, we, we can't stop saying that. We have to start now uh, sending our voice to everywhere. Uh, and we can use this platform to do that. And towards the end of this decade, uh, the youths uh, will not have to make that complaint that they are not uh, that nobody listens to them and we want to make sure that everyone listens to the young people and uh, their their voices heard in the policy making level thank you youth leaders from around the world we've done it you've launched your campaign <laughs> look at those faces <laughs> 
Yep, you've absolutely done it. Uh, we have had during the course of this conversation, this dialogue, or one of the many dialogues that leads up to the UN Food System Summit, uh, and one that is really led by young people. We have so many people asking, how do I join in? How do I be part of it? We've given you links all the way through on our Zoom chat. So that is one way. Um, the leadership has been exceptional. Thank you so much for doing what you're doing. I've also seen questions and comments from people who are not quite so young, but want to be your allies. And so the act for change part is your job, right? How do you get these demands? How do they happen? That is what you do if you're not quite so young, but young at heart. So act for change, act for food is a global youth movement supported and facilitated by the Global Alliance for Improved Nutrition and the Food Foundation. Thank you, facilitators. Thank you, youth leaders. Thank you, attendees, for being part of this global youth movement launch. I'll be following. Take care, everybody. Hunger and malnutrition. Climate change. Unsafe food. Deforestation. Poverty. Soil erosion. Inequality. Human rights violations and abuses. Food systems adds to these problems. We are the future. The young generations. But our future is uncertain. Food. Environment. People. We are all connected. Our beautiful planet should nourish us. Food shouldn't kill us. Food doesn't have to cost the earth. Food can be a way to create. Not to destroy. To learn and to honor and to protect our past and our future. To build mutual respect. Fairness. Understand. Collaboration. We must act for food. And act for change. So we can have. Good food for all. We can pledge. We can act. We can change our world. Join the movement. For better food systems.